and uh, will be giving the answers as well, uh, which we're looking forward to immensely. I'm sure you are as well. So my name's Hilary. I'm here tonight with my colleagues from the Wildlife Trust, Ellie and Victoria. And as I said, Dave will be hosting the quiz. So it's a, it's a Zoom event. I'm sure lots of you are used to Zoom now, aren't you? I think we're all, all very used to it. Hard to believe that a year ago we hadn't heard of it. Um, so this is an event where the whole time your cameras and your microphones will be turned off. So don't worry if you've got odd things going on in the background or have to have a chat halfway through. We can't see or hear you. Um, Okay, I think, uh, oh, the event's being recorded as well. I know there's a couple of people said they can't make it and want to catch up with it later. So just to let you know, it's being recorded. And I think I'll hand over to Victoria. Thank you. Um, welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us this evening. Um, we hope you um, are sitting comfortably and um, yes, feel free. Lots of, lots of you are letting us know um, where you are tonight. Um, Maybe let us know who you are uh, quizzing with, if you've got a, a quiz team name tonight. Um, somebody's just asked if, if the recording will be posted on YouTube. Yes, it will. Um, we'll be recording it, it'll go on YouTube um, and we'll be sending out an email to those of you that have, have opted into emails um, on here tonight. You'll probably see it on our, um, our social media as well. Um, so it's lovely to see some of our, our members have joined us as well tonight. So um, hello to you all and thank you, thank you to our members for supporting us um, at this time. Um, for those of you that are less familiar with Lancashire Wildlife Trust, we are a nature conservation charity looking after over 50 wildlife sites across Lancashire, Manchester and North Merseyside, um, ranging from Brockholes Nature Reserve um, just outside Preston, over to Mere Sands Wood in Rufford in West Lancashire, um, lots of the, the peatlands of Manchester, um, over to the Fylde Sand Dunes. We do a lot of work um, looking after the, the sand dunes over at um, St Anne's. Um, and up towards, um, right to the top of, of North Lancashire, we look after uh, part of Wharton Crag as well. Um, so lots of lots of different wildlife sites across the region. Um, and part of our work is also to, to connect people um, with nature and encourage others to care about the natural world so that we can all work together to protect it. Um, over the last year, you know, nature has been a real lifeline for many people. And we know that spending time in nature um, does have a, a real impact on on our well-being. Um, so part, as part of part of that, we've been running these digital events for a few months, um, and we you know really want to help you um, to feel connected to nature when perhaps it's not quite so easy at the moment, um, and to sort of help people in feel inspired to to go and, and explore your local wild places um, and maybe sort of start start that journey. Um, if you're able to, if you um, you know, if, if you feel you're able, if you could please consider to make a donation tonight to support our work for wildlife, um, you can text to donate tonight, um, and you'll see, um, in fact, on the slide that you can see there um, is the number um, to text there, and you'll see it on a few slides um, as you move through the quiz. So um, we hope you enjoy the event tonight. Um, just before I hand over to Dave, our quiz master, I thought we could do start off by doing a quick poll to see how confident you all are about um, about your wildlife knowledge. So I'll just launch that now. I'm feeling very nervous about my wildlife knowledge, even though I know what the answer. I should know what the answers to these questions are. Yeah. 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 Yes. I, yes, I'm glad that I'm not being tested. <laughs> or are you, V? Mm. Or are you? Mm. Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure Dave fits into one of these categories. I feel like Dave is off the scale. Not <laughs> my life knowledge. I'm still stuck. I, on just, I disagree, but I don't it. <laughs> okay, so we're we're very much um, we're very much middling there. There's a lot of um, yes. A lot of could be betters. Mm. Mm. So we're not we're not overly confident. We're not we're not overly confident. So we're uh, maybe we'll we've probably all got a lot to learn tonight, if nothing else. <laughs> so okay. Well um I shall now hand over to Dave. Thank you very much, Ethan, everyone. Um so if you want to let us know your quiz team names in the chat, that'd be great. Um 
before we begin, though, I'm going to pick on on uh, Ali, Hillary, and Vicky because uh, you have done all the questions, so you can answer these five questions that have been set. So, come on, then. How many years did the Hundred Years War last? I just feel like trick question, um, but history knowledge is not very good. Um, someone in the chat said thirty years, and I want to copy them. Yes, <laughs> I was going to say copy the chat. <laughs> Yeah, I'm using the chat like a like Somebody a. Somebody said 117, friend. so I'll I'll go with Helen who said 117. Well, yeah, Helen, Helen's pretty much on it. I've got 116 written down. Oh, Helen, well done, oh. thank you. So, Canary Islands, what are they named after? The Finches. Go on, Hillary. Vicky, what are they named after? It's a dog. Oh, is a it? Dog? Named after a dog, not the bird. Um, what month did the October Revolution take place? September. January. <laughs> March. Oh. <laughs> Where are Panama hats made? Well, I'm still going with Tim and Honduras. Yeah, I'll go with that. Although e somebody said, Helen said Ecuador, and she was right on uh, the Hundred Years' War, so... Mate, it I'm is, gonna, I'm it gonna is, it is Ecuador. Ecuador. It is Ecuador. And what colour is a purple finch? Blue. <laughs> purple. I'm very stressed. It's a it's a pinky red. It's a raspberry kind of colour as well. So there you go. So yeah, there you go. You've done well. So ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. There are a few rules for tonight. My decision is final, absolutely the end of, no comebacks, that's it. And it is the only time in my life that I get that kind of thing, because usually in this house, what I say doesn't matter, you know. Um, anomalies don't count. So there's a sequences round where things are in a certain order by when they occur in the year. If, for example, I say, when do swallows usually arrive? The answer would be spring. But occasionally one or two swallows over winter they don't count we're not after things like that we're after very general you know when they should be out when they're at their peak shall we say and no doubt someone will spot some of my spelling and grammar mistakes i may have put them in there just to see if you can spot them not because i'm rubbish at spelling and grammar um so the rounds tonight are going to be collective nouns sequences scientific names what am i general knowledge, edible, deadable, everyone's favourite, who am I, and names. So without further ado, shall we begin? Yes, let's do it, let's do it. So, collective nouns. Question one. These are out, out of all, all the quiz, it's going to be out of 59. So see how you do. The collective noun for starlings, when they're in large numbers, often performing impressive twists and turns together is known as a what? Question two. These birds with the male having a bright pink breast have the collective noun of a bellowing. Which bird? Bellowing. Pink breast. Question three. An omniscience, a pantheon, or a prayer are collective terms used to describe which long legged, long billed British wading birds? Which two long legged, long legged British wading birds? An omniscience, pantheon, or prayer. I think they're my favourite collective terms as well, collective noun terms. They're lovely. Question four. Which red-faced finch can have the terms charm, troubling, chime, or trimming? Mm. 
Number five. A bird of water in the UK, this schedule one species can have the terms concentrations as well as a realm for its collective noun, but which species is it? Concentrations are a realm. And the last one for the collective noun round. This duck, when in large numbers, can be referred to as a quilt. Which species? That is a bit of a clue, isn't it? You know me after that after the first lot. Nothing's yeah, as it seems. True. That's true. That's true. I'll give you a, a, a in 10, 15 seconds more if you want to go over any and decide before we do the answers. We'll do each round and answers after each round rather than waiting till the end. And then you can tell us your score in the chat, how you're doing. Or maybe you won't if you don't feel like you've, uh, you've got many. The point of this quiz isn't just to kind of show off your knowledge. It's also to learn a little bit. Okay, are we ready? Answers. Ali, you're going to tell us all these for this round. No. Um... <laughs> so, collective noun for starlings when they're in large numbers, often performing impressive twists and turn, is known as a... Mur murmuration. A murmuration. A murmuration. Yeah. One point for each if you get these. These birds, with the male having a bright pink breast, have the collective noun of a bellowing. Which bird? No Bull clue. Finch. Forgotten. Bullfinches. Bullfinch. Bullfinch. The bellowing of bullfinch. Mm. The bellowing. They, have they have such a sad song, though, because the males just kind of go... Mm. It's a downward inflection, so it sounds sad. It's like... Oh. It's like um, an, a bicycle chain that needs oiling, I always think. <laughs> An omniscience, a pantheon, or a prayer, a collective terms used to describe which two long-legged, long-billed British wading birds? Godwits. They are godwits, yes. Look at that memory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the lovely godwits. Which red-faced finch can have the terms charm, troubling, chime, or trimming as a group? Oh. Ali. Gold, goldfinch. Goldfinch is correct. The charm of goldfinch. Or a trimming of goldfinch. Yeah. A bird of water in the UK, the schedule one species can have the terms concentration as well as realm used for its collective noun. Which species is it? I haven't seen that one. No. We did these on Monday. I know. <laughs> Kingfisher. <laughs> It's it was king the king, the king, oh, yeah. wasn't it? Oh, He's yeah. got a realm. And when you see them on the twigs, concentrating, looking at their fish. Yeah. Now, you right. might be thinking, when, when do you ever see a flock? But just yeah. after they've got their first brood, you can often get four kind of hanging around together, five, sometimes six, you know. Mm -hmm. So last one. This duck, when in large numbers, can be referred to as a quilt. Which species? Mind the eider down. It is Ida. Of course. Of course. Easy. <laughs> they're, not all, they're not all sinister. Maybe they are. Who knows? After round one, then, let us know in the comments your team name, how you've done. There's no, no prizes for, apart from bragging rights, I suppose, but <laughs> it's, all, it's all a learning curve. Shall we do uh, round two? Mm. So yeah. for round two, you're going to see four images in each question and they're muddled up. I want you to put them in order that they appear chronologically during a year, a calendar year. So if you were to record wildlife from January the 1st to the 31st to December, the order in which you would normally see them according to their peaks of when they're either on the wing or in flower, etc. So number one, 
you get a point if you can rearrange these to the order they appear from earliest to latest. So A, bluebell, B, autumn gentian, C, snowdrop, and D, ivy broom rape. Rearrange those into the chronicle or chronological order they should appear from January to December. Which one is out first, second, third, fourth? And like I say, we want normal year. I don't want someone emailing me at one o'clock in the night saying, we had a blue bell out in December one year. <laughs> Not interested. Generally, it doesn't, you know. You happy? Ready for the next yeah, lot? I think so. Let's do this. So the next lot are mushrooms. Well, fungi. St. George's mushroom, scarlet elf cup, parrot wax cap, dryad saddle. Which appears first, which appears last, and which appears second and third? Mm. It's quite a challenge, isn't it? Ali, your job for the rest of the night is to remind me not to sit too close to my screen because the light shines off my balding head. So right, if, we have if, a... I, if, I, if I'm too close, it kind of reminds me that I've lost a lot of hair in the last few years. So <laughs> Do need we need a code to... word? So I need, yeah, yell. sit back. Yeah. <laughs> Great code. Unbreakable. Yeah. <laughs> St. George's mushroom, scarlet elf cup, parrot wax cap, dryad saddle. And then your last lot to reorder are moths. So in a normal year, which would come first, second, third, and fourth? Scarlet tiger, brindle beauty, early moth, and December moth. Now those last two just telling you where they should be or is that just another red herring? I don't think you guys would have asked me to do this if you knew how sadistic I can be with questions, would you? Mm. Yes, it's, uh, yes. You're evil. Yeah. Well, we're we're going to yeah. find out a lot, aren't we? That's good. It's, it's whether I'll actually remember any of it. That's, uh, that's the trick, isn't it? And it's recorded, so ah. you, can, you can get all your wildlife knowledge now, play the quiz with your family, and just be be an absolute whiz at everything UK wildlife. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that. cool. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> right, so you get a point for every one you got which is in the right place it should be. So are we ready for answers? Yes. So plants should be in the order of snowdrop first, bluebell second, ivy broom rape, and autumn gentian. So snowdrops, well, some are out now. I always think the bulk are out end of February. That's when they're really impressive. Bluebells, late April, May. Ivy broom rape, June, July. Autumn gentian, usually August into September. Point for each one you got in the right place. I wanted to give you a point if you just get them all in the right order, but Hillary told me that was mean, so I changed it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm all for more points, me. <laughs> right, let's have a look how you did with the fungi. Ali, which order should they be? Oh, I didn't write it down. No. Um, I think Scarlet Elf Cup comes first. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Scarlet Elf Cup, they're out now. Yeah. Usually, I always think if you see them at Christmas, it's a very early. Usually Scarlet Elf Cups, January, they're at their best now, February. Mm -hmm. And then the next one is St George's Mushroom, which gets its name because... St. George's Day. St. George's Day, which is? April the something. 23rd. 23rd? Yeah. yeah. It's out of 59, this quiz. We should have added that, if you can tell me when St. George's Day is, to make it an even 60. Dryad Saddle, which is summer, and Parrot Wax Cap. The wax caps are notoriously always late in the year. Sometimes you get them slightly earlier, but it's always autumn. And usually with Parrot Wax Caps, they're at their best last week of, of October, first week of November. 
Right, moths. Do you reckon the early moth was the early one, or is that just a, a red herring? Well, I'd like to say it was early, but is yeah. it just early, early in the day? It's early, <laughs> it's early. It's on the wing now, January, February. Feb early February is when it's probably at its peak. Then Brindle Beauty, Scarlet Tiger, and December Moth. Mm. Generally, December Moth is at its it's at its peak in November, so it's it's named wrong anyway. Usually, all done with by the by mid December anyway. So, how do you do out of twelve after round two? What's your collective totals out of a possible eighteen? Yes, yeah. Let us know how you're doing. Are you getting into the swing of it now? Oh, 10 out of 12. Very good. Very Eight, good. Nine, excellent. Yeah. Yeah. So the na nature nuts. 10 out of 12. Lovely. Very good. All the moths right. Fantastic. Very good. Excellent. Excellent. Right. Great. Shall we do round three? Yes, I'm ready. Scientific names. I can hear the groans already. <laughs> no one likes scientific names. Here we go. Puffiness Puffiness is the scientific name used for which seabird? They'll be around for you, Charlotte, don't worry. Puffiness, puffiness. Simple. You say that, but something tells me. A bit like the Panama hat, which I keep referring to. Yeah, but I've got to I've got to throw some easy ones in at some point, haven't I? Some some ones that I just I'm not trying to trick people. Selenoclamis usbrida is the only species in the world whose species name contains a Welsh word. What is it though? Is it a slug? A lichen, a moss, or a moth? Mm. Easy. Mm. It's a good job guessing count as well. <laughs> uh, you've got twenty five percent chance just <laughs> just by going for one. Question three on the scientific names round. Pyrocorax pyrocorax translates as literally flame-coloured raven. Which UK species is it? Flame-coloured raven. Question four. Troglodytes, troglodytes means cave dweller, but which species of bird is this name given to? See, the easy Latin names to remember are all the double double ones. Yeah. Puffinus, puffinus, pyrocorax, yeah. pyrocorax. Pika, pika, mm -hmm. apus, apus. Mm. Crex, Crex, that's my favourite. Yes. So th this one? one's a nice one as well, isn't it? Nice and troglodytes, troglodytes. It's nice. Okay. So four points on offer for this question. So some of the following species have been named after celebrities, but can you match them up? So there are uh, each of these celebrities has something named after them that are on there i want you to tell me which one match up with which so you've got fern moth lima and beetle and your options are donald trump lady gaga arnold schwarzenegger and john cleese this is a fun question i like this very surprising answers do i remember them you know who knows <laughs> Uh, 
I don't think it helps to think what those people look like, does it? We pass no judgments here. <laughs> Although some of them, I probably feel sorry for whatever, you know. Yeah. If they're named after some of those people, you've got to feel sorry for the species. Yeah, maybe there'll be a renaming. <laughs> right, last question in the scientific names round, everyone's favourite round. As of 2017, how many species were named after David Attenborough? Is it 8, 18, 58, or 108? I mean, either way, no matter how many it is, he must be getting bored of it. <laughs> the first but one must have been even, very nice. And then it's yeah. like, oh. <laughs> it's just probably a cheap way to meet him, isn't it? Well, like, I've named this after you. Come, come, come and <laughs> come to the lab and, you know, <laughs> I'll show it you. Worth it, though, to meet David Attenborough. Mm. I don't know if you could name it after because apparently the rule is you can't name it after yourself because a friend of mine discovered a spider and he named it after his father but used his father's surname which is technically his surname so it's a way of kind of naming it after you but you're naming it after your dad if you see what mm. I mean mm. I but, if you could, but, but if you if so if you had to name it after someone else who would it be because you could just say oh my wife or my husband or my partner or ch child or whatever or Lady Gaga for some Or Lady Gaga. <laughs> yeah, you could name it after someone and try and meet them, couldn't you? So, mm. Right, everyone, you've had enough time. How do you think you've done? Let's go through the answers. Puffiness, puffiness is, of course, Ellie. Not what you expect it to be. It and is the Manx the Shearwater. <laughs> yes, that's the one. <laughs> and if you're wondering how on earth puffiness, puffiness cannot be puffing, it's because when they were being named, the taxidermist got the taxidermist got it wrong. The labels mixed up and put puffin on Manx Shearwater, and the Manx Shearwater name on puffin, but they've never been corrected. So puffin is puffiness, Manx Shearwater. Selenoclamis isbrida is the only species in the world whose name contains a Welsh word. What is it though? Slug. Like, slug. It is the ghost slug. Yes, a beautiful slug as well. Found in Wales, presumably. It is, yes, yeah. Paracorax, Paracorax, the flame-coloured raven. Vicky? I was trying to remember and I can't. Oh, this is a that real insight into it. That red-legged chuff, Vicky. It is the chuff. Oh, the chuff, yes. With its red beak and red legs. V, you got the last one, the next one though, I remember, didn't you? <laughs> Troglodytes, troglodytes. You remembered when I got one right. Yes, yes. It is, it is the wren, the humble little quake, cave dweller. Right. How did you do on these? Do you remember these from Monday? So okay. what do you think uh, Donald Trump's named after? Is it a moth? It's a well, moth. no, it's the other way around. It's what <laughs> what's <laughs> Donald yeah. Trump's not named after a moth. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Would you say what would you say Lady Gaga has a name named after her as? Fern, wasn't it? Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, Beetle. Which leaves Lima and John Cleese. You are absolutely spot on. So Donald Trump is named after a moth. Nope, other way around. The moth is named after <laughs> Donald Trump. There is a whole genus of ferns. So Lady Gaga actually has 19 species with her name on it because wow. it's the genus that's Gaga. Uh, the beetle is Arnold Schwarzenegger, presumably because of its strength. You know, beetles are notorious at being super strong for the size of their body, aren't they? Um, and John Cleese is named after a lemur, or the other way around. You know what I mean. Dave, do you get a point per answer? Point for each for one. So if you got each, so if you get, yes, you can have a point Points for each for one. for everyone. Yes. <laughs> and how many species has David Attenborough got named after him? 18. It is 18 as of 2017. Poor moth. Have a look. Google Donald Trump moth and have a look at the moth's hair. You'll understand why it's been <laughs> named after him. So how did you do? 
I'm expecting full marks from everyone. <laughs> Easy. Everyone loves scientific names. Oh. People have got some right. Good. Two, three, four. Somebody said not good. <laughs> <laughs> not that's fine. We're right there with you. <laughs> yeah. yeah the, you know, we're learning. Everyone's learning. That's the fun of it. Yeah, it's the fun. Yeah. Right. Next one. I can't read that because the thing's in the way. What's what's this from, Ellie? What what am I? What am I? So you're going to see some abstract pictures now of various things. You'll have two options of what they are. I want you to tell me, who am I? Who am I? Is that what it is? Or what am I? What am I? What am I? <laughs> so your first one, is it a peacock? Is it an emperor moth? Or is it part of the bio tapestry? <laughs> Easy. When you know the answer. And it's easy because I took the picture, so I know what I was pointing the camera at, at the time. Right, number two. Is it a fly agaric or is it a sickna? It's the winning that counts, Ellie. It is, of course, the winning that counts. <laughs> I take it all back. No, it's the learning. Those questions at the start, Panama hat, etc. Um, I was told those in my teens, and I've always remembered them. So hopefully it'll be the same with this. When someone says, what's puffing us, puffing us, you'll go, it's not puffing. <laughs> Three, is this a water fern or a water moss? Or any clever clog says there's two species in there. Yes, but it's still, there's only one right answer, I'm afraid. Bad influence. I'm being called a bad influence. <laughs> I'm taking it as a compliment. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Number four, is it a fly or is it a bee? Number five. What was the collective noun, Ali, of these? Um, 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 pass. Wait. Prayer. Yes. Prayer. Omni <laughs> Omni um, Omniscience. Omniscience, yeah. Pantheon. So am I a bar-tailed godwit or am I a black-tailed godwit? And then finally for this round, am I a fungus or am I a woodlouse nest? Who's made those eggs? Fungus or a woodlouse? Easy peasy. Right, shall we have answers? So what was, was it a peacock or an emperor? Mm -hmm. uh, an, uh, an emperor. First one was an emperor moth. Mm -hmm. Male to be precise. Second is the fly agaric, mm -hmm. the famous mushroom, the red one with the white spots, the fairy tale mushroom. Ellie was outside your house. Yes, that was. I think it stopped now. <laughs> Sorry Sounds about exciting. the honking, everyone. <laughs> Sounds exciting. Put the camera outside the window. Let's have a nosy. What's going on? Number three is water fern. Little tiny fern. You can see how small it is because in, in amongst it is some, some duckweed. Um, 
so it is small, but it is a fern, water fern. Highly problematic, very invasive. Four is a fly. It's the bumblebee hoverfly. Those pesky bee fly mimics <laughs> tricking us all. I was saying to you on Monday, wasn't that the fascinating thing with this species is that it can also show another colour form, which looks exactly like the red-tailed bumblebee. So it's all dark with a little orangey red tail as well. So, yeah, clever things, aren't they? But it's in the Very eyes. Cool. The eyes are a fly eye. They're not like a bumblebee. So there's just something about it when you look at it and go, it looks like a fly. Mm. If you ignore the colours yeah. and you just imagine it as all brownie grey, you'd go, that's a fly. Yeah. Theoretically. It's a good disguise, though. Mm. Five is a bar-tailed godwit. You can tell because its beak is slightly curved upwards. A black tail would be very straight. Also, the colour in the face as well is, is very typically wintry, bar-tailed, not black-tailed, which look a bit dirty, uniform grey. But it's the bill that's the key. A slightly upturned is bar-tailed. Very straight would be black-tailed. And finally, it's a fungus. This is the common bird's nest fungus which is just amazing. When you see them lots together, it does look like a colony of birds all together. How do we do? Right. Well, then I'll go. Oh, I know that we've been head. through all the answers, but that's the first round that I've remembered all the answers. Good. <laughs> so, well done, me. Four, six. Six out of six. Fantastic. Four, well done, everyone. Six. Very good. It's too easy then. I need to throw some harder questions. No, I don't think <laughs> one wrong. Yeah, well done, everyone. Fantastic. Right. Getting next, into the swing of it now. Next round is general knowledge. So, question one Which family has the most numbers of species in the UK? Is it beetles, flies, or moths? I'll also tell you how many roughly of each there are. So if you want to have a guess at how many in each, well, roughly how many there are in each, you can do that. Question two. The great spotted woodpecker is zygodactyl. What does this mean? A, it has two toes facing forward and two backwards. B, all its toes point forward. Or C, the toes are double jointed, so can face forward or back. Word of the day, zygodactyl. Yeah, it's a good word. Very good word. But you can only use it when you know what it means. True. But after the quiz, we will all know what it means. Unless you use it in the sentence, I don't know what zygodactyl means. <laughs> Question three. Which UK mammal has males known as boars, females known as sows, and the young known as cubs? Boars, sows, and cubs. Question four. Which one of these is classed as poisonous? Is it A, the adder, B, death cap, C, horn of the dead, or D, wasp? Which one is poisonous? Which one is classed as poisonous? Remember, general rules apply. I'll explain why after. Question five. The stormcock is an old name for which bird? Well, 
we need to bring back old names for birds. Mm. Yes, definitely. That's a good word. Um, do you know the answer, Hilary? Goat sucker is mm. still my favourite. The old name for nightjar. Right, last one in general knowledge. This was a million pound question, by the way, on who wants to be a millionaire. Which is the smallest member of the thrush family? Is it song thrush, red wing, ring goozle, or blackbird? Song thrush, red wing, ring goozle, or blackbird? Did they get it right on uh, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Can't remember. <laughs> it's only easy when you know the question. When it's only easy when you know the answers, though, isn't it? I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, it's yeah, just because like... I I was screaming. I can't remember. I was screaming, saying what the answer was. But then some of the like when it's like five hundred pounds and it's which celebrity? It's like I've got no idea. Mm. Mm. Yeah. you've had 15 yeah. questions all on trees or something like that I'd be like yeah I'd be a millionaire 15 questions on boy zone I've got no chance you know <laughs> right answers how do you think you've done so which family has the most numbers of species in the UK flies flies so there's around two and a half thousand species of moth there's around 4,200 species of beetle and there's around 7,000 species of fly in the UK. Yeah. 7,000. Great. So the great spotted woodpecker is zygotactyl. What does this mean? It means it has two toes that fa uh, facing forward and two backwards. I had to include great spotted woodpecker because I was going to include, um, just say woodpecker, mm. but there's one in Europe called the three-toed woodpecker for obvious uh -huh. reasons. So. Mm. Which UK <laughs> mammal has males known as boars, females as sows, and young are known as cubs? Ellie? It was badgers, wasn't it? It was badgers. It still is. It hasn't changed since Monday. <laughs> They're still Who being knows? known as this. There wasn't a conference or anything in, in between. There might have been. So which one of these is classed as poisonous? Hillary? The death cap. It's the death cap. Because it and is poisonous. It is poisonous. So if you thought adder or wasp, yes, they have kind of toxins, but they are venomous, not poisonous. So... Poison is something that you ingest or is something done passively to you, whereas venom is something that is something does it to you. So a snake biting you is venomous. A spider biting you is venomous. They are not poisonous. So it's a little pet peeve of mine. Mm. Mushrooms are poisonous because they're not doing anything to you. You have to actively eat them mm. for them to be any problem. And horn of the dead is edible anyway another name for the trumpet uh, horn of plenty or trumpet de la muerte horn of the dead good name it is it's supposedly it looks like a little black trumpet growing from the base of oak trees and supposedly it's the way of the dead being able to communicate with the you know with the with the, with the real world wow. so bizarrely the only place i've ever seen it in rochdale is at the base of a tree that's got a memorial plaque on it to the scout that fell off a cliff how weird's that? That's very good. That's very yeah. spooky. Massive coincidence, but you know, <laughs> love love a good name like that. Um, stormcock is an old name for which bird? The missile thrush. It is the missile thrush. Often gets its name because on kind of days, well, in the last week or two, where it's been a bit miserable and a bit windy and a bit wild, that as soon as it calms down, they're often singing straight away. Beautiful song. And the smallest member of the thrush family. It's One million pounds. It the is red the red wing. wing. For my million pounds. Your million oh, pounds. No. It is the red wing. Yeah. 
Blackbird and Ring Oozle are pretty much the same size. Song th- they're, the, they're the largest. Song Thrush, slightly smaller. Red Wings, smallest. How do we do? How did we do? So the next round is everyone's favorite round. We're going to play Edible Deadable. So I'm sure some of you have played this with me before. For those who haven't, we're going to put some pictures up of different species, not tell you what they are. I just want you to tell me whether they are edible or poisonous. Edible, deadable, simple as that. So your first one, your starter for 10. Is it edible? Is it deadable? Number two, is it edible? Is it edible? Number three, is it edible? Is it edible? Four. It's blue. I'm going to be testing you three, not only whether they're edible or deadable, but what they actually are as well. <laughs> See, this is around that you just have to go with your inner caveman, you know? Yeah, but I died well, quite a lot during our practice day. You did. You did. <laughs> Five. Six. Seven. And your last one. This is where if you're working in a team, you find out who, when the zombie apocalypse comes, you want to hang around with and who you definitely don't want to hang around with, isn't it? Mm. Mind you, if that ever happens, the place to head to is probably the Heinz factory. Just stock up on tinned food rather than uh, risking it. Right. How do you think you've done? Out of eight, point for each. There's no extra points for telling me what species they are, but you three are going to tell me. So what's what's the first one? Um, Species, please. Amethyst deceiver. Well done. Is the amethyst deceiver edible or deadable? Edible. It is. Amethyst deceiver and it's edible. It's a lovely, lovely looking thing. Two. What's two? Yeah, well, it's deadable. <laughs> I can't remember what it was, but I I did eat it in our practice round. You did eat it, it. and that's why you're no longer taking part in this quiz, because it's henbane, which is poisonous. Smells revolting as well. Mm. So if you kind of go near it or touch it, it smells pretty bad, which you've got to ask the question about how do you end up poisoning yourself by eating something that smells revolting, but who knows? (laughs) Three. Is a morel and it's edible. It is a morel and it's edible. It is the common morel. Four. You're in a caveman and say, I shouldn't eat this. We're very suspicious about blue food. 
but mm, with the but... oyster plant, it is edible. You'll and never we've already guess. eaten the amethyst deceiver, haven't we? Which yeah. is a strange colour. Yeah. yeah, never judge a book by its cover. Mm. You guess. So tell me what oyster plant tastes of. Oysters. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not tricking you. But we never. Know I wouldn't today. do such a thing. <laughs> Number five is ground elder. You can always tell because it's kind of. It's it's technically five leaves, five leaves, but the bottom two leaves split, so it looks like there's more than there are, but actually it's still only five, and it's got this nice kind of pinkish tinge to the base of the stem. The Romans brought it over as a food plant, and now it's invasive. It gets if you get it in your garden, it's kind of a bit of a pain, mm -hmm. but it's delicious. As you know, uses a spring green. Six, everyone's favourite, is the penny bun. Or porcini, if you're Italian, sep, if you're French. It is definitely edible. One of the most prized mushrooms around. Seven is, of course, wild garlic, which is edible. Ramsons, it's proper botanical name, but definitely edible. And eight, Ali. Dead, dead, deadable. Deadable. It's definitely, well, it's called the sickener. It's poisonous. That's a clue, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. It's a mushroom in red. It's probably enough to go, yeah, I shouldn't eat that. Don't trust, Don't trust anything, anything red. red. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. United fans. Yeah. Let's... <laughs> um, what was I going to say? There was something about sick now. Red mushrooms. It'll come to me anyway. Anyway, how did you do after that round? Did you survive? How many? If did you survive? You didn't survive. It's the end of the quiz for you, I'm afraid. Three, yeah, four, yeah. Doing some, some doing well. Some doing well. Doing better on this round. Very good. Good to hear. Mm. Someone's just about survived, so that's good. Clinging on to the next round. Yeah. Right, next round. Who am I? So I'm going to read out some statements about these species, and you've got to tell me what species they are referring to. So, I am a summer visiting bird that breeds in colonies in vertical sandy or earthy banks. At around 12 to, 12 to 13 centimetres in length, I can often be seen hunting insects in low flight over lakes and rivers. But who am I? Number two, I am a butterfly which can occur in many types of habitat and I usually say shades of cream, black and orange. In some years, I can arrive in the UK in huge numbers having, having travelled up from the continent. But who am I? Butterfly, lots of habitats, cream, black, orange, huge numbers from the continent. Number three, I am a moth that occurs as a migrant, though sometimes my larvae are found here. I'm so big, I can sometimes make a squeak and was the Lepidoptera highlight in the film, The Silence of the Lambs. I saw someone in the chat and just ask what the Latin name for oyster plant was. It's Mertensia maritima. Mm -hmm. It's available to buy for six pounds. <laughs> there you go. Number four. 
I'm a wading bird that often passes through England in April and May on my way to breeding grounds. The female is more brightly colored than the male and when in groups are referred to as a trip. Who is it? Female is more brightly colored than the male. Number five. I am a large non-native member of the Umbelifer family, sometimes reaching five meters in height. I like to occur on waste ground and along rivers and near water. Be careful not to touch me as my sap will cause serious skin burns in sunlight. Finally, I am a bird that breeds in woodland. The best chance of seeing me is at dusk, where I can be seen flying direct patrols over treetops at dusk. Whilst I can stay here all year, my numbers are often swelled in autumn by the arrival of more from as far away as Siberia. Flying direct patrols at dusk over treetops. How do you think you've done in the penultimate round? Should we get the answers? Yes. So some are visiting bird that breeds in colonies in vertical sandy earthy banks, hunting over lakes and rivers will be a... Sand Martin. Martin. Sand Martin is correct. Yeah. Butterfly, which can occur in many types of habitats, various shades of cream, black and orange. Which species is it? Painted ladies. It is the painted lady. And for all the Silence of the Lambs fans out there, what is the moth? Death head hawk moth. It is the death's head hawk moth. Goth moth. Yeah. That's so cool. So wading bird, known as a trip. Females more brightly colored than the males. Mm, cannot remember at all. It is the dotterel. One of the few few birds in the UK where females are more brightly colored. In fact, the only other one I could think of would be the theralopes, red necked and gray. I'm trying to think of any others where the female would be more brightly coloured. I'll keep thinking. I think it's only those three. Anyway, large non-native member of the Umbelifer um, um, family, five metres in height. What is giant, it? Giant hogsweed. Giant hogweed. Yes. Bit of a thug and a bit of a pain at the moment, especially in the northwest. Seems to be getting a real strong foothold. That's the problem with a lot of the flooding we've had, is it just keeps washing mm -hmm. seed down from plants along riverbanks, etc., into new areas. It's a pain. Mm -hmm. And the bird that breeds in woodland, best chance of seeing it at dusk and can appear from as far away as Siberia is? The woodcock. It is a woodcock. Flying over the treetops, doing their road uh, roading, it's called, doing all sorts of weird clicks and whistles. It's a fascinating thing. Wow. How did we do? Oh, we've got Full House from Charlotte. Well yeah. done. Well done. Very good. Another Full House from Meg. Well done. Ah, oh, the wrong sort of hawk moth. You were in the right area though, Joe. It's all right. Right, last round, my favorite round, this one. Why have I got so many pens in ears? Right. <clears throat> Names. So I'm going to show you some uh, species now. Point for each one. 
you can have four options. One of the options is not real. I want you to tell me which one is not real. Okay. Question one, which of these names is not a real name for a fungus? Is it lemon disco, midnight disco, pink disco, or apple tree disco? I love this frown. Because it means at least three of these names are real. Yeah, that's always, that's the shocking thing, isn't it? Yeah. Lemon disco, midnight disco, pink disco, or apple tree disco. Number two, some more fungi. Which of these is not a real name? Hairy curtain crust, fox's mittens, warty cavalier, or mouse pea pink girl? which is not a real name for a fungus. Number three, which of these names is not a real scientific name? Is it Fartus, Turdus, Arses, or Buggeranus? Again, three of these are real. Fartus, Turdus, Arsis, Buggeranus. Number four. Which of these names is not a real bird name? Is it Satanic Nightjar, Sandy Galito, Clive's Warbler, or invisible rail? Three of them are real. Number five, which of these names is not a real butterfly name? Purple Emperor, Glasswing Butterfly, Americana Exotica or the Blind Ringlet? And your last question for the quiz is, which of these names is not a real moth name? Is it Broken Elbow, Peach Blossom, Blood Vein or Sandy Carpet? There you go. So the whole quiz will be out of 59. I don't know why I'm writing it down. I already know that. Um, so we'll go through the answers for this. Then you can add it all up and then let us know how well you've done. So which is not a real fungus for question one? <laughs> apple tree disco, did you say, Ellie? Yeah, apple tree apple disco. Apple tree disco is not real. Lemon disco, midnight disco, pink disco, they are all real. Apple tree disco is not. Great. Second lot, which one is not real? I think it's um, Fox's Mittens. Fox's Mittens is not real. Hairy Curtain Crust, Water Cavalier, Mouse Pea Pink Gill, they are all real. Amazing. Mouse Pea Pink Gills, just it's exactly what it says on the tin. It stinks of like rodenty pee. So if you've ever had pet rats or pet mice, you'll know what that smells like. And it's got pink gills, mouse pee pink girl. <laughs> of course. Yeah. So which of these names is not a real scientific name? Arses. It's Fartus. Oh. Turdus, Arses and Buggeranus, they are all real. Very real because... Lauren, my partner, she looks after bugger anus. Wattle cranes at Chester Zoo. They are bugger anus, wattle cranes. Turdus, of course, is the thrush family. Blackbird is Turdus. I can't remember what arses is. Don't look it up after this quiz. <laughs> <laughs> so which of these birds' names is not real? It was, the, was it the Clive's Warbler? 
Clive's warbler is not real. No one's going to name a bird Clive. <laughs> Satanic Nightjar, Sandy Galito, and the Invisible Rail are all real. Butterfly, Purple Emperor, Glass Winged, Americana Exotica, or Blind Ringlet, which one? Americana. Americana Exotica. Film fans will know that's from the fall. It's not a real butterfly at all. And finally, which is not a real moth name? That broken elbow. It but... is broken elbow. Mm. It is not a real moth name. Peach blossom, blood vein, and sandy carpet all are. It's almost like I've done this quiz before, isn't it? It's almost, yeah. <laughs> but not quite. <laughs> Right. Well done, everyone. Oof. Or not, Yay. depending on how you've done. <laughs> Out of 59, honestly, if you've if you've got anywhere near that, I'd be impressed. Because it's uh 34. 40. Woo. Yeah. 49. They're, yeah. They're good. Wow. Oh, uh, we've been causing arguments. <laughs> Sorry, Joe. Sorry, Joe. 32. That's good. It's good. I, I wouldn't have got 32. I have no clue what I got. We're not having a quiz where everyone gets 55 out of 59. It's not happening on my watch. You know? <laughs> I'd like to think when I watch University Challenge my percentage of questions I get right, which is about 3%. <laughs> so. Wildlife Wizards, 40 out of 59. Nice, very nice. Yep. Great. Well done, everybody. That's brilliant. Very good. Yeah, you've all done well. Better than I thought. I have to make it more devious next time. <laughs> no! no, I don't think so. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll, by the end, we're going to be absolute pros. We do a few more of these. We'll be at Dave's level. Yeah, I for, just, I mean, not for wildlife, just for sinister questions. That's <laughs> all. But they're the kind of things you remember, aren't they? You know. Okay. You'll be, you'll be talking to someone in a few weeks and you'll be like, yeah. do you know what else Schwarzenegger's got a beetle named after him? <laughs> and Donald Trump's actually named after a moth. The best moth. It's the biggest moth, everything, you know. It's yeah. amazing, this moth. Yeah. Very right. cool. If, if you have any complaints, any anything, you know, spelling mistakes, things like that, feel free to email me. It won't be read, but you can always email me. <laughs> so it's just a bit of fun. Yeah, thanks, of, Dave. It was it's great. Quite, it's really quite good. all right. It's, really uh, it's the, you know. Yeah, Joe's saying she don't trust herself to eat anything from the wild. <laughs> no, me neither. It is, it, is, it is nasty putting a bright purple mushroom in as an edible one, but... You don't judge book by its covers. That's the message from this evening. Is, you know, only dark, for red only dark, mushrooms. Yeah, red mushrooms. Yeah. <laughs> when people say red's bad, it's like it is. Apart from raspberries, strawberries, hawthorn, rose hips, mm. red apples. You know, red currants, cherries, grapes. <laughs> Apart from that. Red's bad. Yeah. Great. Yeah, look, yeah, Paula saying because good to see me back at Bickershaw. I'd like, yeah, it would be. <laughs> if only I could get anywhere. Yeah. I'm well, technically in Wales, so it's strict. It's That's why we're doing things like this, isn't it? So uh yeah, thanks everyone for coming because it is all about trying to keep in touch with each other and in touch with nature in these such hard times. So great thanks dave it's been great it's a pleasure yeah yeah thanks everyone thank you very much thank you everybody for for joining us tonight we've had some really nice comments everyone's enjoyed it so that's good um 
and uh, yes, hopefully we'll be doing we'll be doing another quiz at some point down the line. But we've also um, got some other sort of talks um, lined up over the next few months. So um, if you keep an eye on our website and social media, um, we'll be pushing those out, and you can find out more about our work. Um, and thank you. I can see that we've had some people text to donate tonight as well. I can see those donations coming in now. So thank you so much um, for supporting our work um, and texting to donate. That's great. Um, and yes, the, the, the tonight's quiz will be um, on our YouTube channel, on our website, um, and we'll be sending an email out to those that have opted in tonight as well. So you can you can catch up again. I might retain it if I watch it a third time. It might actually <laughs> <laughs> yeah third time's the charm yeah. what you need to do is suggest to your friends it's like oh Lanks wildlife trust have put this quiz on shall we do it having already done it and then you'd yeah. look really impressive wouldn't you that's it and you can remember them <laughs> yeah hey. exactly hey. exactly meg says it's the best quiz she's done all lockdown so from that we can assume meg has only done this quiz during <laughs> lockdown <laughs> We'll take it. We'll take yes. that one. Yeah. Yeah. There's lies, damn lies and statistics. And you know, it's how it's how you market it. Oh yes. Very yeah. much. Best quiz I've ever done. <laughs> Only quiz I've ever done. Yeah. Right. right. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, thank you, to, everyone. I'm gonna love you. you all and leave you. Definitely. And I'll see you with the next one. Yes. Take care, yeah. everybody. Nice thank evening. You. Bye. Bye, bye. everyone. Bye.